Good morning, afternoon, evening. I don't know who's where and what everyone's doing. But, um, so I slept in. I still have to go to work. And I didn't work out. The old me would have been like, oh my God, that's, that's falling off track. And this me has to go, it's okay. Every day doesn't have to be the same routine, right? I was at work yesterday. I climbed a ladder so many times. I said, I don't know why I even worked out this morning. It just up and down, up and down for about three hours straight. And then I realized, you know, walking around, um, even laughing is exercise. I don't think people realize this, that even the breathing is putting your body through trying, right? <laughs> this video is not about exercise, I promise. It's about being okay with making a different choice. It's about being okay saying, you know, it is what it is. Today, I'm going to live this way. Yesterday, I felt like I was falling apart. It's been gradually coming upon me. You know, kind of like I'm the gazelle and there's a little lion creeping up. And I didn't realize it till I was just like, ah! fight or flight. Fight or flight gets you in that mode to where you just want to shut down. Then you have to go through all those emotions of feeling guilty or overthinking or being hurt or you can figure out where it goes but um hardest part is embracing those moments embracing them in a sense that you feel them but you don't hold on to them we all have to learn to let go i think that's one thing we forget and it's like when i left out of a toxic relationship i held on to guilt for a very long time i've talked about that before and then I had to grieve the loss of whatever that situation was in my life then it came to acceptance and it started all over again <laughs> At some point those wounds healed enough to allow me to accept what had happened but from that situation I lost trust in myself I lost trust that I could make a, a good decision that um, would lead me to a better life. And I just want to remind you that if you're in a toxic situation or you're coming out of one, you're going to have a hard time trusting everyone around you. But remember, a lot of it is you're not trusting yourself. If you can learn to make small little steps, just something that you can test your trust with yourself. I know that sounds hard. <laughs> you know, open up to a friend and tell them things that make you feel vulnerable. Allow that person to listen to you. And if they pass judgment upon you, just remember that's not you, that's them. But you found the courage to trust that you could open up to someone else. Like I said, that's one of the hardest parts is learning to trust yourself. We still have a hard time learning who we can trust in this world. That's going to be that way because there's always toxic sides to everyone, including ourselves. And a lot of times it's our ego that's like, mm, that's not a good idea. No, don't do that. That's stupid. You're going to fail if you try. You have to learn to shut off that monkey mind chatter is what Eckhart Tolle calls it and when you can learn to divert those thoughts into I'm not listening to you I'm still gonna try because if I don't try I failed right if I try and I don't succeed I can try again try try again <laughs> we have to learn every day is a new day every day is a new chance Every day is a chance to turn around and say, I'm going to get on this path. And the thing is, when you choose to change your life, hopefully you're choosing to change it for the better. But in the sense that 
It's going to take that courage. You're going to have to trust yourself. You're going to have to understand that there will be trials and tribulations. You will have days like the ones you've seen me have for the last couple days where you're just like, ah, I don't know. I want to give up. But that's what happens when you transition. You know, I had read about how the caterpillar goes into the chrysalis and turns into complete goo. It completely disappears from what it was and then restructures into something beautiful. Not to say it wasn't beautiful before, but something completely different than what it originally went into hermit mode for. <clears throat> Sorry. We have to realize when we're going to change, that's when we have to create perimeters around ourselves. I'm not saying build walls. I'm not saying push everyone away. But I'm saying take the time for yourself. Take the time to understand that you can tell people, I don't have time for that right now. I'm talking to myself right now because <laughs> um, lately I've been staying up late and sitting on my patio just because I love being outside. When I moved here, nobody sat outside. And this is everywhere I go. <laughs> if I'm outside, everyone's like, hey, and they'll hang around until they're exhausted and yawning. And I'm like, oh my God, I just wanted some me time. I like to sit outside and write or draw or breathe. And a lot of times people are drawn to that. And then they're like, oh, it's a lovely night. And then they see what they're missing. I'm glad that people can open up their eyes and see there's a world around them. I just wish they could do it without someone leading them to it. <laughs> but in the end, understand it's okay to, I can't do this right now. I'm focusing on me. And I've been called selfish. I've been called snotty. I've been called a lot of things because I like my me time. But your me time is your healing time. That's where you contemplate. That's where your brain can ruminate over things, your history, your life. Things that will allow you to heal. It's hard to heal when you're in a group of people and not everyone is working on themselves. Because one thing I've always remembered is if you hang out with four millionaires, you will be the, the fifth. If you hang out with four drug addicts, you will become the fifth. You will become the company you keep. If you're around company that you're not necessarily in alignment with, that's when you have to pull back and focus on where you want to go, what you want to do. And you'll start to see those people come into your world. When I started my new job, it was funny because everyone was, hey, hey, hey. I found myself hanging with the managers and everyone thought I was one of management. No, I'm just like y'all. But in a sense, my mom keeps going, your boss is grooming you. I see it. And I'm over here going, I don't know if I want to do their job. <laughs> of course, increase in pay, right? The point is, you are going to turn into the company you keep. So learn to trust yourself. Learn to trust that your guidance system, this here, this, is going to take you where you want to go. But the thing is, you have to realize where you want to go. And I think a lot of it is, none of us consider the paths that we're choosing. A lot of people wake up, feel overwhelmed, stressed, don't want to do it how I've been the last few days. Like it's, it's just, I don't even want to breathe anymore. <laughs> it's, don't hold your breath. It's going to change. That is the inevitable. You just have to embrace it and go, I can learn to surf. I can learn to parasail. I can learn to ski. I can learn to go with the flow. It's not always easy, but the more you fight it, the more you're going to whip and be battered and feel defeated. But if you can just surrender and go, okay, I get it. There is 
a plan for my life. I have options. I have doors to open. We've all seen movies where there's doors and you're like, oh, no, not that one. <laughs> no. And if you leave it cracked, the wrong things come out like Pandora's box. But you have to remember that each choice you make is taking you along a path. They'll all get you to the same destination. It's all going to the same place. Do you want to take the hard road or do you want to take the one that you can just sail on? The choice really is yours. But it still comes back to you have to learn to trust yourself. And being in the, that toxic relationship I was in, and that's not the only one. I've had several. <laughs> I've had a lot of karmic lessons to bring me back to me. That made me have to go, wow, what I allowed them to do to me because they didn't do anything to me. I allowed it. Sure, keep beating me up. Sure, keep putting me down. Sure, keep making me get stronger and more courageous and finding my backbone. That's the thing with somebody who is toxic and abusive. They don't realize that when you find your strength, you're not necessarily going to tell them. And they're building you in certain ways. And I used to ask people when I was in um, narcissistic recovery groups. They would complain and complain and complain and tell their stories. And I, I said, you keep giving them their power. Let me ask you a question. What did you gain from the relationship with them? What did you learn about yourself? What could you do to change the outcome and not meet that person again? Because we're going to keep meeting the same energy over and over until we learn what it is we're supposed to learn. Learn to speak up. Learn to walk away. Learn to feel that energy changing and go, oh, no, this is not how we started. This is not where I want to go. Whatever it is, there's lessons everywhere. A lot of relationships can show you how you felt as a child and help you heal those childhood wounds. If you felt neglected as a child, then you're overbearing as an adult. You're too much of a giver. I was that person. It doesn't mean I was truly neglected. It just means that I felt that way. Something in my childhood made me feel insecure. Something in my childhood made me feel like if I don't give, then nobody's really going to want to be around me and love me. It took a toxic relationship to teach me to teach myself. I am lovable. I deserve love. I can give love without expectation. It took a long time to learn that because the silent treatments and the gaslighting and the beating up and the manipulation and just the chaos had me so trapped in a labyrinth in my mind one day it was like light came on and i was like i'm not doing this anymore and it was what he said to me that finally made me go oh my god it's never going to change it was the day i tried to assert myself i was learning about creating boundaries and building my self-esteem back up and I tried one day and I spoke up and said I don't appreciate what you did to me please don't do it again and if you do you've crossed a boundary and there's going to be situations that we're going to have to discuss he looked at me laughed and said you'll never do anything about it that was the day that I had to go oh my god he's right I haven't done anything about it. And that was the day I said, put on my Wonder Woman cape. Let me do this quietly, but I'm going to show you. And it took a while. I started exercising. I started mapping my day hour by hour. I started writing a lot. Started listening to uplifting music, playing with my children nonstop, cooking, keeping myself busy. Actually wrote a book in like three days. Have that published on Amazon. <laughs> when I'd have a block, he'd do something and I'd be like, oh, that's where that goes. And it's a small little novella. It's nothing huge. But it was the experience of what I endured and what it took to leave. All in a sci-fi fantasy little world. Just remember that learn to listen to people. Learn to see how they're pushing your buttons 
and ask yourself, what is it they're trying to teach me about me? Look at how little you trust yourself and understand that when you can turn that around, and like I said, try to find ways to learn to trust yourself again. You're going to find that the more you trust you, the more you respect and love yourself. The more that you respect and love yourself, the less you're willing to let somebody trod all over your boundaries or realize you never even had any. When you don't have boundaries for yourself, that is being a low value individual. You don't find that you have any worth. Nobody can place the value of who you are on you. Just because somebody doesn't say that you're valuable or see the goodness in you, it doesn't negate from the fact of what you have. If you were to pick up a diamond and someone goes, that's trash, it doesn't change the fact that it's a diamond. Nonetheless, if you pick up a piece of charcoal and someone goes, that's trash, that used to bring heat and feed and all kinds of things to people's world. The thing is, in one form, it's seen as, seen as a commodity. In the other form, it's seen as luxurious. <laughs> it's the same thing. It just had to undergo extreme heat and pressure and a transformation to become something of little value in the world we live in now and something that's high value. It's funny how something can be switched over time, but don't let people switch you up. Learn to trust you. You've got you. It took a while for me. I now can trust in certain situations and I'm still learning. I'm still practicing. I'm still trying to pick my battles, but we all have the capability of healing. You just have to look at your surroundings. Look at how you spend your time. Stop punishing yourself. Stop not believing in you. You don't need somebody else to feed into you so that you can feel strong and seen and heard. On that note, I'm gonna pretty much head out the door and get going to work. So love everybody. Peace, love, and light. Bye.